Are you ready to have your mind blown? Are you ready to be dazzled? Do you want to be a little confused? Keep watching. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and another mind blowing facts video. Today we're taking a look at the golden state of California. More than any other state, California has the most entertaining and fascinating weirdness in its history. The hardest part about making this video was breaking down the weirdness to just 10. There's plenty of material for this list. California is an interesting state and I'm going to tell you about some of the mind blowing facts right now. Number 10. The bear on the California flag was actually real. California has a wild grizzly bear on its flag, and that's about the only wild grizzly bear they got. Yes, there are no more grizzlies in California, and there hasn't been for almost 100 years. The California grizzly has been extinct since 1924. The grizzly bear on the flag has a name, and it is Monarch. The drawing was based on the real bear that was found in the Ventura Mountains in 1889, but lived in captivity until his death in San Francisco 22 years after he was drawn for the flag. He weighed 1,200 pounds when he died. He is now stuffed at the California Academy of Science in San Francisco. Go on by and say hi to Monarch. He's been there a while. Number 9. It has the avocado capital of the world. Fallbrook, California is known as the avocado capital of the world and it hosts an annual avocado festival. Fallbrook, California is in between San Diego and Los Angeles, in case you don't know. I figured all this was important because of the popularity of avocado toast. Very popular these days. Actually, in, from June 1st to September 1st, 2019, more than 2 million photos of avocado toast were uploaded to Instagram every single day. More avocados are grown in this region than any other county in the nation. Although it's classified as a vegetable, it's actually a fruit. Avocados are considered a fruit because they fit the botanical criteria for a berry thanks to their fleshy pulp and large seed. That sounds dirty. Large seed? It doesn't sound right. But it is. It's got a large seed. There are more than 3,000 avocado growers in California farming on more than 50,000 acres. A single California avocado tree can produce, on average, 60 pounds or 150 avocados every single year. Number eight, a lucky place to pee. The county store in Baker has sold more winning California state lottery tickets than any other outlet in the state. They have sold nine jackpot tickets. Yeah, like over a million dollars at least. If you've ever seen Baker, you might find it weird that anyone does anything other than get gas and relieve their bladder while driving to Vegas here or they stop and beg for change or a gallon of gas on their way home from Vegas. I've been here. They have the world's largest thermometer. It's right there. When we drove by it when I was young, my dad told me that was Paul Bunyan's rectal thermometer originally. Yeah, I believed him. I don't know why I believed Paul Bunyan was a real thing, but it's my dad for you. Yeah, they've sold nine jackpot tickets. That's amazing. And there's nothing to this town. It is just a little speck on the side of the road. Number seven, the most corrupt politicians of all time. California has a reputation for bad politicians. They've had a slew of incompetence and corruption. First, you have a man who is considered by historians as the most corrupt politician to ever take office in this country. His name was Joseph Spiney. According to legend, he served on the Fresno Board of Trustees and was infamous for being illiterate and the most corrupt building contractor in the city. Spiney became the chairman of the board in 1893 and later mayor for 10 minutes before resigning and giving the position to someone else that would help him do shady stuff. Yeah, but that wasn't all. He was involved in illegal gambling, hourly companionship, moonshine, and fake building permits. He once was very angry at the city's electricity bill. He used his political power to make sure all of Fresno was in a total blackout. Yeah, he ordered the city clerk to tell the electric company just to shut off the power. He wasn't paying that bill. One theory is he used the money that was budgeted for the utilities to line his own pockets. And so instead of paying it, he just let them turn off the lights. Spiney is still known as the most corrupt politician in California history and possibly the country. And on top of it, the only California-born president, Richard Nixon, everybody knows Tricky Dick, he's considered the most corrupt president we've ever had. They're both from California. Shining icons of integrity right there. Number six, they make too much wine. 
California produces more than 17 million gallons of wine each year. And oddly enough, I know a few housewives in Torrance, California that are responsible for drinking 1 million of those gallons each year. I'm not talking bad about them. They're cheerleader moms and they all have PTSD from all that nonsense. The vineyards in the Golden State produce about 81% of the nation's wine, not to mention exporting loads to Europe. The state itself boasts over 1,200 wineries, both large and small. The most famous wine growing region is Napa Valley. Central and Russian River Valley are popular locations as well, but Napa Valley is the big one. There's just busloads of people doing wine tasting there every single weekend. And if you're those Torrance housewives, they'll go on a Tuesday, even though it's like a six hour drive to Napa, California. Number five, top five for worst air quality. That's right. The five worst cities in the U.S. for air pollution are all located in California. They're not like five of them in the top 10. They are number one, two, three, four, and five. No kidding. Here they are. The Fresno Madera area, which it's kind of a metro area, experienced persistent lingering air pollution due to combination of warm, stable weather and valley walls. It just locks it in there and it stays there. You got Bakersfield down the road from them, well, quite a ways, but it's down the road. Bakersfield, California, you might not associate a farming community with one of the highest levels of pollution, but yeah, Bakersfield, it's brutal. The Visalia, Porterville, Hanford, California area, the valley is surrounded by high mountain ranges and it just traps in the pollution a lot like Fresno. Los Angeles, California. The smog is due to the high rate of car ownership and the natural pollution, again, trapped by the mountains to the east of Los Angeles. It's brutal. I grew up there. It is some of the worst air quality you'll ever experience. San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland area. Basically, the Bay Area has the fifth worst air quality in the nation. Now, they're also tied with Fairbanks, Alaska. So yeah, technically they're top five, but they have the same amount of air pollution and air pollution alert days as San Jose and San Francisco. So yeah, it's bad, especially Los Angeles. I grew up there and I can tell you it is just ugly. That's one of the reasons I left California. Number four, they are recall happy. Yeah, they're always trying to recall a governor, a judge, whoever they can. If they don't like you, they just try and recall you. Since 1913, there have been 179 recall attempts in the state of California of elected officials. Only 10 recall efforts collected enough signatures to qualify for a ballot, and of those, only six resulted in the official being recalled, like removed from office. They've tried it with 55 governors, two lieutenant governors, seven attorney generals, one entire Supreme Court bench. Yeah, they tried to get rid of all of them. 27 times they've tried to get rid of Supreme Court justices, state Supreme Court justices, I should say, not like the federal ones. One state secretary, one state treasurer, two insurance commissioners, two board of equalization commissioners, 30 state senators, and 50 members of the California Assembly. Yeah, they try it all the time. It's just like the changing of the seasons. It happens once or twice a year in California. The biggest and most recently was Gray Davis in 2003, and that's how California got Arnold Schwarzenegger as the governor. They've had a couple state senators that were tossed since then, I think 2013 and 2014, but that's about it. Number three, world leader in producing almonds. Yeah, they produce a lot of almonds in California. The almond tree was brought to California from Spain in the mid 1700s by Franciscan Padres. The moist, cool weather of the coastal missions is where they originally planted in, but it wasn't optimum growing conditions, so it wasn't really a big thing. That was until the following century when the trees were planted inland and they grew. California produces 80% of the world's almonds. Eat an almond anywhere in the world and chances are it was grown in the Golden State. They harvest about 800,000 acres of almond trees every single year. California is the only place in North America where almonds grow commercially. Now, one of the biggest problems, not one of the biggest, but a major factor they're looking at when it comes to the drought in California is how much water is used to grow almonds and some other things. But almonds like the big one they always talk about because where they're growing them, there's really not enough water for it. So it's basically pumped in or taken from the reservoirs and they use a lot of it and people are starting to go, well, is it worth it? You know, maybe we should try growing almonds someplace else. It's weird. It's a whole lot of nonsense that I don't have time to get into on this 10, 15 minute video. I tried to read about it and it really just hurt my head. Number two, it's against the law for a bar to have a ladies night. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. 
It's against the law in California because it's gender discrimination. Yeah, I guess men complain about it. Why isn't there a dude's night where we get to drink for free or get in for free? The practice was first outlawed in 1985. Now, I think it was outlawed then, but I remember them happening in the mid 90s. I don't think they really started pushing that till probably late 90s, 2000s, something like that but it's really a thing. You can't do it. California's anti-discrimination statute provides for a minimum $4,000 per violation per drink, plus attorney's fees. Yeah, so if you go to a bar and they give a girl a drink for free, it could be constituted as a ladies' night, and you could take them to court if you're a dude that feels you were discriminated against. It's ridiculous. But what's funny is California has all kinds of weird laws like that. That I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's some kind of basis to them, but a lot of them are all, well, why are we dealing with this? Why is this a thing? All right, before we get to number one, I will leave a link for some other California videos that you might find interesting. They'll be in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. On to number one. And number one, the dog mare. In Sonoma, California, a dog named Bosco was elected as the first mayor of the town. He served from 1981 till his death in 1994. Sonoma is a little town in the hills north of San Jose. They currently have about a thousand residents, and back in 1981, when Bosco was elected, they had somewhere around 700. It's not a big place that really needs a mayor. Now, this was obviously not something the people were taking very seriously. He wasn't making decisions for the town or anything like that. The people of Sonoma were being funny, not stupid. Now, this is where it gets mind blowing. In 1989, over a million people in China decided that they'd had enough of the communist government. They wanted change. They started protesting, and ground zero for these protests were Tiananmen Square. If you're old enough, you remember this. The people wanted democracy, and they wanted it bad. The communist government did everything they could to stop it, eventually bringing in tanks and soldiers and shooting the place up. But before they did that, they were getting their whole propaganda machine going. They ran stories in their propaganda newspapers that basically portrayed Bosco as a real mayor. They basically said, you want democracy like the United States? Their democracy is so corrupt and bad, they have dogs running towns. And it's an example of the failings of the American electoral process. So that's how they gave it out to the Chinese people, thinking they'd buy it. They didn't buy it. Actually, Bosco became kind of a rally cry for the Chinese protests here in the United States. There's people with signs of Bosco and all kinds of weird stuff. Bosco was a beloved member of the this town. There's a statue of Bosco, the dog elected mayor that sits in front of the post office to this day. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. And go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.